Good morning. Good to see you. Good to be here. And I am a chaplain over at the Eldora State Training School, work with Greater Iowa Youth for Christ. We're a contracted um, staff. I wish we were state because we'd get more benefits, but that's okay. We're, we're earning Jesus bucks. But um, also pastor have pastored for the last 20 years in California, pastor uh, over at Alice Church of God in Conrad as well. So I definitely stu- do stay busy, but I believe I spoke to Pastor Harrison, gosh, six months ago, and he mentioned it, and I said, sure. I believe they were doing Alpha at the time, and uh, you know, I'm praying for you guys that God brings you the right man. Pastor Harrison was the man for time as, such a time as this, but now as he moves on, that God would bring you that individual that would reach out, that would love God with all his heart and love people. And as you love God and you love people, you're going to take care of everything else, such as going into the, the training school and different places and reaching out. But you know, if there was ever a day to be strong in tough times, it's today. That devastation, that tragedy that happened yesterday shouldn't have happened. It should not have happened. I mean, we may have our political differences. Of course, I'm a staunch Republican and Trump supporter. My wife would fight you. She loves Trump more than I do, I think. But that's okay. We trust, thank God. I believe there was an angel that just did zip and it grazed his ear. That's God. Believe it or not, where's a worship pastor? That's God. And we got to give him the glory for touching your life. He did. It's nothing but God. I, I lost my best friend on July 3rd, 60 years old, to throat cancer. And he was my ministry partner. We preached and ministered everywhere from all over California to uh, Window Rock, Arizona, to Texas, to New Mexico. And we love God and love people right where they're at. But I want to pray initially for our nation. What does 2 Chronicles 7.14 say? If my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face. And what else? Turn from our wicked ways. Then what does God say? He's going to hear from heaven and heal our land. See, that that verse is for us, the believers in Jesus. He's not preaching to anybody else, but to us here in that portion of Scripture. So we need to realize that God is doing something. We live in some perilous times. Look at Israel. Look at everything going on all over the world. Even the campuses, anti-Semitism. Our nation is in trouble. Inflation's gone through the roof. LGBTQT agenda, they want to take over the books in school and we can't let them. We need to stand up and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Remember, the battle's not ours. It belongs to God. But Jesus Christ paid the price on Calvary. Amen? So we got to learn how to pray the price. We've got to get a hold of God and say, God, heal our nation, heal our land. Forgive me if I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. What did Jesus say? Love your neighbor as yourself. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with everything you have within you. Then love your neighbor. But you don't know my neighbor, some might say. Man, he's a mean old man. Or a mean old woman. Come on, some of you guys got some little cantankerous people around here. I've run into them. Got to love them. That's what I tell people in my church. You may not like me, 
But according to the word of God, you have to love me. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I step on toes, but it's not me. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that does that. I've asked God early this morning praying and saying, okay, God, you give me what you want me to say. I'm sure I've prepared for a message. Sure, I've done all of what I'm supposed to be doing, getting into the word of God and continuing. But before we get started, I want to pray for President Trump, but more so for the families that lost several loved ones. Can we do that? Heavenly Father, I just thank you right now for the privilege of being in your house with your people, God. I thank you for the privilege of being able to speak uh, your word. I pray that I would decrease, that you would increase. But I also pray right now for the, those that lost loved ones. Several people lost their lives, God, at that rally. I pray, God of comfort, God of peace, that you would wrap your loving arms around those families as, as they're grieving loss. I pray that you would put a hedge of protection around President Trump and his family. I pray, God, that you would have your way as we look to you this morning. Uh, bless your word in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. So I'm going to put on my readers because I have to now. <laughs> Don't want to, but I have to. One thing I want to ask you, and I know you guys probably live in, how many live in Steamboat here? How many live here actually? Just a handful. And, and see, always remember, not everybody in your city knows Jesus. Amen? Remember that. Not everybody in your city knows Jesus. Don't take for, that for granted. We need to be influential around those that we're around, our family members, our friends, our loved ones, but our communities. We just did a, uh, I call them outreaches at the park and Jenna and, and uh, Craig, Don and his wife and a few others came by. We had maybe 75 people, four people from the training school showed up. So it was really cool. We did a little bluegrass, I did a little old school, but we shared the gospel. We lifted up the name of Jesus in that community park. I'll never take for granted that everybody knows the Lord. So we've got to continue. And, and my prayer for you when you find a pastor again is one like Pastor Harrison. I thank God that he would go with us to Christmas parties, to uh, Alpha, him and his wife. And, and it's a blessing. Find someone that has a heart of evangelism like him. Very grateful to have met him and got to know him. We need to be bold and strong in these tough times. We need to share the good news with everybody around us. What's the good news? What is good news? A good news to a dying man is that he's going to live, right? Good news to a dying man is that he's going to live. And when you have Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior, you're going to live forever. You see, I heard someone say many years ago, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Right? Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. All of us, what is the scripture? As it appointed unto man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. It is hell without Jesus. And we need to have an urgency in our spirits. We need to have an urgency. You might have kids or grandkids that are straight away and want nothing to do with God. You better begin to fast and pray for them that God gets a hold of their hearts. No one is assured of tomorrow. We need to recognize and realize, again, I'm just grateful that my children are all in serving the Lord in different areas of their life in different parts of the country. The enemy would lie to you and tell you, but well, what can you do? You'd be surprised at the power of a praying grandma. 
How many of you ever remember focus on the family? You ever hear a focus on the family? It's still going today. I believe his name was James Dobson who ran Focus on the Family. I believe he's passed now. But his grandpa, he tells a story, and I heard him years ago. His grandpa began to pray for him and his cousin, H.B. London Jr., who ran the Church of the Nazarene, the whole denomination, before they were born. The power of prayer. And they both had worldwide ministries. You can pray, grandma and grandpa, mom and dad, young people. You might have somebody at school that doesn't like you. Kill them with kindness. Don't kill them, but with kindness. Love them unconditionally as Jesus did. Each one can reach one. Let's go to our scriptures this morning found in Joshua 1, verses 1 through 9. If you have a Bible, I don't know if it's on the screen. I'm going to read it out of the New King James Version because that's the kind of the guy I am. So if you have a Bible, you can follow along. You might have an NIV or whatever your version is. Joshua 1, 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, and you and all this people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so... I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide an inheritance, the land which I swore to give their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, And then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed. Be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Why would Joshua, God tell Joshua three times in verse 9, be strong and courageous? They were going to cross the river and go into battle and to unknown territory, which is scary. Unknown territory to us can be different things. Like I mentioned before uh, with our worship leader, Brother Pastor Lippert, are you a pastor here? Maybe, was? Okay, still, I'll give you that honor, brother. Um, The initial report is never the official report. When you go to the doctor and somebody tells you, you got cancer, you have this, you have that, most of us, ah. Remember again, the initial report is never the official report. God has the final say-so, amen? God healed my friend. 
but not the way we wanted to. But he's home in glory. This is not our home. It's temporary. Like Abraham, we're searching for that city whose maker and builder is God. Amen? There are times God asks us to do something, and we're not confident doing or sharing or even being up on a pulpit. I, my knees used to knock when I first got up years ago. I love this part of the scripture that God told Joshua. Now arise and go. Verse 2. And I'm grateful that you have many good people here that have gone to the training school, that do go out. Jenna, for evangelism, for reaching out, that have the heart for the lost. That has to be a burden, not just for them. Oh, it's great for you to go, Pastor Randy, uh, Chaplain Randy, to the training school. We all have a part to do. I'm going to say it again. We all have a part to do, whether it's giving, whether it's sending, whether it's praying, whatever it would be. But if we all do our part, we do our best, and God will do the rest. But if God is tugging on you, to get involved, see Jenna. How many of you have heard of Edmund Burke? Anybody? 17th century, I believe he's Irish statesman. And I know I'm going to butcher his quote, but I believe I've shared it before. And I think it was here. His quote says, evil prevails when good men do nothing. And sometimes men and women there's too many good men in the church doing nothing. If God asks you to go mow your neighbor's lawn, go do it. Even if he's that cranky old man. If God tells you, ladies, bake a pie or something and go give it to the church, I mean the store clerk, maybe it's the church clerk, I don't know. Store clerk. Like I said, you gotta, we have to be love in action. We've got to reach out in love. It's called lifestyle evangelism. Each and every one of us should be reaching out in someone. You have a circle of influence. You know that you have a circle of influence. Whether it's on your job, whether it's in your neighborhood, in your various communities, get involved. In our little city of Conrad, we did Black Dirt Days. I had my little church of 10, 12 people. Let's go. We're going to go put game booths out there. We're going to have fun with the kids. We're going to give away different types of things. Whatever it would be in your community, whether it's a parade, whatever it would be, if God's tugging on your heart, just remember, it's the Holy Spirit that would put something in your heart. Oh, it's just me. No, it's God speaking to you. You may have a dream. You may have something that God was dropping your spirit. Don't be afraid. That's where God is telling Joshua and he's telling you today. Don't be afraid. Be of good courage. And I understand we all have doubts and different things and that's okay. Even in Matthew 28, 16 through 20, the Great Commission, what does it say? In verse 16, it says, The eleven disciples went away to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But look at this. But some doubted. A lot of us dog doubting Thomas. A lot of us, ah. You know, he was there with Jesus to the end. That's another message, and I won't, I won't bring that one up because I had a whole message on that before. But it says, verse 18, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, 
Therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. We are not alone. Amen. Jesus is our Emmanuel. God with us. You've got to know that you're not alone. I was a little knucklehead, stuck on stupid and got in so much trouble. And I was out on those streets in, in, in Southern California doing stupid stuff. And it was the grace of God. I remember getting shot at by police. And I heard the bullets zooming as I was running. Real stuff. Just like you watching the movies, it's the grace of God, I'm alive. It's the grace of God, President Trump is alive, amen? We should reach out to our communities with our glorious gospel. God has equipped us. You have everything you need in God's word. And then you've got a great support here, a great community of believers. You've got a great community of people here that love you and want to see you move. Wouldn't it be great if both services, I know it's vacation time, but if both services were filled to the brim, packed out, I think it would be great. Acts 1.8 says this, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be what? Witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. It didn't say the pastor is going to be a witness. We all need to be his witnesses. Jehovah's Witnesses have a little wrong, but they're out there. You see them little kids Everybody's out there. I know they did in California. Although they're preaching another gospel, which is not the gospel at all. If God is for us, who can be against us? Romans 8, 13, 31, I'm sorry. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Again, remember... That Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Remember that song? He walks with me and he talks with me. Tells me that I'm his own. So many beautiful old hymns. Just a closer walk with you. So many. Again, the Lord told Joshua from in verses 6, 7, and 9, be strong and of good courage. Only be strong and very courageous. We must be bold and be strong. A lot of times, we don't want to make waves. Again, as I'm, I'm going to go back a little bit, but when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and he's telling you to tell that grocery clerk, I want you to know something, Jesus loves you. You don't have to preach a three-point sermon. Just a little kindness. You don't know what that person or individual might be going through. I've done that before, and then all of a sudden I see somebody on that other side, start tearing up. Because you don't know where they're at in their lives. There are so many stories after story after story about how God uses ordinary people. Remember that. He, he used the, the kid with the fishes and the loaves. God uses ordinary people like you and me. Because we serve an extraordinary God. He is that way maker. Like the song. 
the miracle worker, the promise keeper. Verse 9, have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know, we have the natural tendency to fight or flight. Sometimes we don't like confrontation. It's easier to go around. But in these days, we need to be strong. Remember, it's not by might nor by power, but it's by God's spirit that he enables us to move forward. But we've got to walk in obedience to what God is telling us to do. Reminds me of a story that I wound up a very young Christian. And I've told you all before, I believe, got saved from drug addiction, incarceration, all that junk. That's nothing to brag about, but that's the lifestyle that I lived. When I gave my life to Christ, June 14th, 1982, in the kitchen of my home, 946 East Florida Street in Ontario, California. I know the day when I said yes to Jesus because he picked me up and he turned me around and he set my feet on solid ground. And so about two years in the Lord and, you know, I had to learn how to become a, a man, a husband, a father. All I knew was the gang life and all that dumb stuff. And one day I got an argument. I'm a young Christian, two years in the Lord, and we got in a really bad argument, the wife and I. And by the way, we've been married 43 years. It'll be 44, October 18th. I'm very thankful that God has blessed me with a good woman, loves God, loves people. But in, the, in this, after this big fight, and I know nobody gets in arguments here with their spouse, Right? Don't raise your hand because I know we all have disagreements. We all struggle. It amazed me at my first pastorate how I had a 90-year-old uh, associate and it had been there with a the building and his wife, she tells me, oh, we never argue. And I said, you're married to a dead man then. We're human. We argue, we fight. So in this fight, I'm rushing I'm saying, I'm, I got a, I, in my mind, I'm saying, you know what? I'm done. Jumped in my little truck. I was going to the bank. I was going back to the vomit. I was going to pull the little money I had there, go look at an old girlfriend, go grab some heroin and do what I was going to do. But as I was driving to the bank, clearly the Holy Spirit, I didn't hear no audible voices, but the Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me, Randy, don't run from me, run to me. I pulled over and I cried and I repented and I turned around and I went home and I apologized and ate a whole lot of crow and crow's not good tasting. But I humbled myself, but see, you say, wow, that was you. Things I did though in the first two years Pray, fast, read, and memorize God's word. Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Had the keys to the church I was, Assembly of God Church I was at. Had prayer meeting at 5 o'clock in the morning. See, I thought one way. If I could party all night into the next day, why couldn't I begin to read the Bible that said Jesus prayed all night? So I started getting a hold of God, and I'd have my Bible right there, crying, snotting, praying, reading. And I believe it was his word, and he who has an ear, let him hear. I began to develop an ear to hear the Spirit of the Lord. You develop that ear to hear, and you'll know. And the devil doesn't want you to share your faith Okay, the devil doesn't want you to be bold and be strong. There are some people that go and want to isolate themselves and live on a cabin in the, in the woods. And oh, yeah, it's okay. No, we're to reach out. There's too many.
people around us that don't know. We must shout it from the mountaintop, proclaim it in the city streets. Jesus is coming back. We don't know when, but look at the times around us. There's a, anybody ever hear of David Jeremiah? Start listening to some of his end time stuff. It's pretty good. I'm telling you guys, it's later than we think. The clock is ticking. And we've got to do our best to reach out. I know my friend in heaven heard those words. Well done, good and faithful servant into the rest of your Lord. That's what I want to hear one day. I may not have riches here in heaven, but I am leaving a legacy for my children of faith. I'm so grateful that they all know Jesus, that my grandkids are serving in their churches. I'm blessed. I'm going to read verses 8 and go on to and 9. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. Where else is that? In Psalms 1, right? Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law shall he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in due season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. We've got to get that word and send it out. It was the word of God that got a hold of this hard heart. There was a man on a job, Ray Washington Jr., that loved me unconditionally. And I used to tell him, get away from me. I don't want to hear that. I had just gotten out of prison and I was working. And he was, God brought him right there to me. For a whole year, he always hit me with a scripture a day. John 3.3, 3, John 3.16, John 14, 6, the Romans wrote, he was hitting with me with the word of God. What is Hebrews 4, 12? The word of God is living and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces the division of soul and spirit in the joints and the marrow. It's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of our heart. So share a scripture with somebody. Well, I'm not a preacher. You don't have to be a preacher. I used to walk the streets in Los Angeles, me and a couple of guys, and go what we called street witnessing. One time I almost got my head knocked off by a guy twice my size. But I got fight. I got in so many fights. How much more for the cross of Christ? How much more? I got beat down for a stupid neighborhood I have tattooed on my stomach. How much more that Jesus has given me eternal life and you eternal life. Don't take your salvation for granted. Do what he tells you to do. And it's the little things. Have I told you guys about elbow macaroni? No? I really believe we need to be like an elbow macaroni, a circle, a bend, and a circle. The more we give, the more God gives to us, and it becomes a natural outflow of his Holy Spirit loving people for Jesus. Goes on to say here, meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous said, make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We're going to go through stuff. All of us do. What did Jesus say in John 16, 33? These things I have told you, that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I've overcome the world. Jesus has overcome. He'll help you. He'll, he'll carry you through the storms. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. 2 Timothy 1.7 was one of my very first favorite scriptures. 
For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. A lot of us sometimes get, have anxiety, depression, fighting us in our minds. Sometimes we have to take our thoughts captive and hang on to it. Your, your therapist, your, your psych will give, prescribe Zantac, Prozac. What we need today is the book of Acts and the power of the Holy Spirit to move forward. I'm not telling you not to talk to somebody, but if you just get on your knees before God, sometimes a little time with Jesus makes a whole lot of difference. I'm, gonna, I'm almost ready to close here. Philippians 4 is one of my favorite, 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always, a sin I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all that the Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing. I want to hear it say, be anxious for nothing. Anxiety is a killer, you know. Be anxious for nothing but in what? Everything. In every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God that transcends all understanding will what? Guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. God is that way maker, but we have to do our part. I'm going to end with this story. Anybody ever hear of a guy by the name of Greg Laurie? He does harvest crusades. He was a protege of Billy Graham. He has a book out about Billy Graham. And so I'm going to read this and close, and then we'll let y'all come up. We live in a very dark cultural, uh, we live in a very dark time culturally, and a little light will go a long way. We have an entire generation of young people who seem to be adrift morally and spiritually. That is why the world so desperately needs the gospel. The Bible clearly teaches that our culture will grow darker. It isn't going to get better. It's going to get worse. Even though humanity has increased in scientific, medical, historical, educational, psychological, and technological acknowledged, knowledge to an astounding degree, we have not changed our basic nature. Our confidence has increased, but our peace of mind has diminished. Our accomplishments have increased, but our sense of purpose and meaning have all but disappeared. Instead of improving the morals and spiritual quality of our lives, our discoveries and accomplishments have simply provided new ways to show ourselves for what we really are, depraved, sinful, and wicked. The spiral is downward, not upward. As Christians, we might be tempted to withdraw to our own subculture, but that is not what we're supposed to do. The object, objective of believers is not to isolate but to infiltrate. It's not to evade, but to invade. Jesus said, you are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. We need to impact our culture without being compromised by it. Amen. Come on up, brother, if you want to close. Who's closing in prayer? Have we got another song? Okay. Thank you for having me. God bless you.